let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful day we thank you for the holy hour that you are ordained to devote upon in your scriptures as we seek to understand the sacrament of the holy communion help us to receive you abide in you and have life in fullness in you we ask this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ during the holy communion service serving wine from a common cup single cup has its own challenges the pastor may come across some strange experiences while serving wine from the common cup I remember two persons who have such peculiar ways of receiving the cup. One is a retired railway employee who when the cup is taken near him he will shudder a little bit raise his right hand and as soon as the wine touches his upper lip he will gently push the cup away. I encountered another person in the village a tall and hefty farmer he will prayerfully hold his palms together and when the cup is taken to his mouth he will hold the bottom of the cup with his strong thumbs to ensure that the pastor does not pull the cup away before he had his full gulp of wine The sermon theme today is the sacrament of the holy communion. I have narrated two different ways and attitudes towards the holy communion. And in the New Testament too, we discern two different understandings about the last supper. In the first three gospels called the synoptic gospels because because of its unified way of narratives The last supper the communion is deliberately set during the festival of the Passover Passover is a festival which commemorates the liberation of the Hebrews from the Egyptian bondage by setting the institution of the holy communion near the Passover during the Passover festival the synoptic gospels want to convey a message to the Jews that it is not the passover but it is the cross of christ which assures you the salvation there is also a direct an e- direct equation between the blood of the lamb sacrificed during the passover for the remission of sins and the blood of jesus christ crucified during the passover festival Our Lord Jesus Christ initiates the sacrament of holy communion lifting up the bread thanking breaking giving telling them to do this whenever you come together Our Lord Jesus Christ initiates the sacrament of the holy communion under the cloud of crucifixion on the night that he was betrayed After that he goes on to Gethsemane where the passion of the lord unfolds here the last supper the holy communion is inseparably related to suffering the cross the blood letting for the remission of sin in john's gospel the call to eat the flesh and drink the blood of the lord the son of man is nowhere found near crucifixion we find the last supper happening in chapter 13 
but there is no institution of holy communion there john narrates it only as the last meal that jesus had with his disciples and uh, chapter 13 forms part of a larger farewell discourse from chapter 13 to 15 where jesus prepares his uh, disciples for his leaving the call to eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man comes in John chapter 6 following the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. And like other disciples, uh, like other miracles, this miracle too does not end with a miraculous event that is the feeding. And that is why Jesus chastises the crowd in chapter 6 verses 26 and 27 uh, which came in search of the bread which perishes in John the miracle is always called a Samayon which is an act of power which shows something beyond the miracle miracle doesn't end in itself it is a symbol or a sign for something that is powerful beyond itself in this miracle, it is not the bread, but Jesus himself who is on offer. I am the bread of life. Again, Jesus declares in chapter 6, verse 53, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Jesus Christ is on offer for the people. In chapter 6, verse 15, Jesus Christ runs away from the crowd when they wanted to come and forcefully take him and crown him as the kings because uh, the, Jesus want, uh, the crowd wanted Jesus only as a miracle maker. They only wanted the material benefits from Jesus' miracles and not Jesus himself. They failed to understand that Jesus is the life and only those who have Jesus, who are united with Jesus, will have life. In the evening, the disciples embark on a boat travel without Jesus on the boat and they were caught up in the storm. This incident is recorded not to show the prowess of Jesus to walk on the waters. For the people of the deserts who always travel on the sand, deep waters always symbolize chaos and death. Whenever the disciples are on water, they are always caught up with some kind of emergency and Jesus has to intervene and here Jesus treads upon what you fear as chaos and death in your life when Jesus steps into the boat miraculously and immediately the boat has gone to the place where it is it has to go the boat was in the land to which they were going immediately. The gospel is, when you have Jesus, you have life. At the end of this chapter, Peter declares, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of the eternal life. Having Jesus is having life is not only the message of John chapter 6 but it is a central message of the whole of the gospel of John. John begins the gospel by informing us all that in first chapter verse 4 that Jesus the word had life and that life was a light for human beings. In the fourth chapter the Samaritan woman had her life redeemed because she came to Jesus, she encountered, accepted Jesus. In chapter 15, 
I'm sorry, in chapter 5, Jesus approaches a man who was paralytic for 38 years and he was restored to full life. In chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery was fortunate enough to be dragged to Jesus and she had a chance for another life. And the climatic height comes right in the middle of the gospel with a graphic narration in chapter 11 when Lazarus dies when Jesus was away and he is brought back to life when Jesus nears the grave. The gospel is, when you have Jesus, you have life in full. John wrote his gospel when the Roman persecution began to roll in full steam. Believing in Jesus is a matter of life and death. Many retracted from the Christian faith to save their skins. John wanted to warn them that only with Jesus you will have life or else you will die. The warning is given even in a sharper tone during the farewell discourse 13 to 17. In John 15, 6, our Lord entreats the disciples saying, Abide in me, if not, you will wither, and you will be thrown out and burned in fire. In chapter 15, the parable of wine and branches is operative. Here in John 6, the parable of feasting on Jesus is operative. In chapter 6, verse 56, Jesus says, Whoever feeds on me, on my flesh, whoever drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As for John, abiding in Christ is to live. Life away from Jesus is to die. It is unfortunate that in the Holy Communion liturgy of all the Protestant churches, Despite the Reformation attempts to distinguish itself from the Roman uh, Catholic traditions, we still have strong elements of Catholic ideas like blood, sacrifice, and sin. In all our three Holy Communion liturgies, in our Holy, Commun Holy Liturgy book, we hear a dominant Catholic tone of remembering the suffering and death of Jesus Christ as a sacrifice for sin. The emphasis on receiving Jesus and receiving Jesus' life in full is very subdued in all our liturgies. I mentioned two persons with opposite reaction to the Holy Communion in the beginning of my sermon. The first person seemed to have been deeply affected by the Catholic ideology of sacrifice, bloodletting, and sin. That is why he shuddered when the cup was brought near him. As for the second person, he seemed to have read the Gospel of John, especially the chapter 6, and wanted to ensure that he had Jesus in full with a full mouth of wine. He wanted to have Jesus and to abide in him. Dearly beloved, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, our Lord Jesus Christ is his own offer for you. Whenever the call goes forth inviting the faithful to come and partake Holy Communion at the altar, at the table of the Lord, Jesus' eternal call to share his flesh and blood is renewed. Whenever you walk down the aisle to partake at the Lord's table, or when the elements is brought to your seat, and whenever you lift up your hands to receive the elements of the Holy Sacrament, effectively, you receive 
the life giving source jesus christ into your whole being the lord jesus christ comes to you through the elements of bread and wine come with joy partake in our lord jesus christ abide in him have life in fullness